Hello and welcome back to Beginner Guides. Today we're going to be checking out Cornwall in the UK. So firstly, what makes Cornwall so good as a beginner surfer? We're not going to get too scientific in this video, but the reason Cornwall is so good is all to do with its geography. In the UK, the coast actually stretches out underwater for hundreds of miles. If you look here on Google Maps, you can actually see this. So you can see this shallower patch of water before it drops off into the deeper stuff. Now what this means is that those huge storms out in the North Atlantic, they roll in toward the coast and as they hit that continental shelf, they are already slowing down before they hit the coast. Those swells then have to wrap around a really rugged coastline. So it means the waves are getting diluted from the continental shelf and then they're getting diluted again depending on which beach they have to bend into. However, don't be fooled, this doesn't make the waves any less dangerous. They're still obviously gonna have lots of rip currents, you're still gonna have powerful waves. Always best to consult the help of your surf instructor or surf camp. But with such a jagged coastline, it means there's basically always somewhere to surf. Additionally, Cornwall has great learn to surf infrastructure. All the main beaches in these towns are so well set up for learning how to surf. You've got surf schools right on the beach at most beaches. You've got cafes, restaurants, bars. So yeah, you can head to any of these main beaches and you'll find somewhere to learn how to surf. So let's check out some of the best beginner surf spots in all of Cornwall. Now, first up, we're gonna go to St. Ives, which is my adopted hometown. And I don't want to make things too biased in this video, but I think it's one of the best beginner surf spots in the whole county. Now, Porthmere Beach is the only beach you can really surf in St. Ives. The only tricky thing to navigate at Porthmere is the tides. Now, at high tide, the beach mostly becomes unsurfable because of the sandbank, turns what are normally pretty nice mellow waves into a really heavy and dangerous shore break. But by far the best time to learn how to surf is on the mid tide, either on the outgoing or the incoming. On the outgoing tide at Porthmere, the waves are always slightly larger. Porthmere is epic because on smaller days, it can allow for that progression. So it can allow you to start in the white water, get your technique down with, regarding your pop-up and your paddling and catching waves, getting all familiar with that. But then as you progress, you can start paddling out and surfing waves a bit further out the back. So if you're stuck or if, if I've just made things really confusing about <laughs> Porthmere, Go and see the guys down at St. Ives Surf School. They've got all the local insights and surf technique knowledge that can help you learn and improve in St. Ives. They also schedule all of their lessons and, and higher times around the tides. So if you go down and see them, they'll basically just tell you exactly when the best time to surf is. I'll leave the link in the description to where you can check those guys out. So next up, you've got Gadrivi. So just across the bay from Porthmere and St. Ives, you've got Gadrivi Beach. Now Gadrivi is a bit more exposed than Porthmere, which means it gets a lot more swell. It cops that wind and it cops that swell a lot more than Porthmere does. That said, if it's really small on Porthmere, you might be able to go to Godrivi and find some slightly bigger waves. That's not necessarily a good thing as a beginner, but if Porthmere is flat, Godrivi is gonna maybe have some slightly bigger waves. But to be honest, Godrivi almost always has waves and the waves come in over this nice long flat beach, which means for the most part, they break out the back and then they roll in, not very powerfully, and kind of form these long lines of white water. Kadrivi is epic for beginners, especially around the mid to low tide, because you can start off in the white water. And then because the waves break so far out, what you can do is head a bit further out and kind of learn how to paddle out, spin your board around and catch waves. And you might be able to catch a white water wave that then reforms into an unbroken wave. So it reforms again, and then you can all of a sudden learn how to ride the unbroken wave without it being too big or too scary. But because Gadrivi is so exposed, it does get a lot of wind and a lot of weather. So if you're stuck with what to do with surfing at Gadrivi, go and see the guys at Gwythian Academy of Surfing. They're the main surf school in the area and have all the knowledge and equipment that you need. The only downside for Gadrivi is you do have to walk a little bit further. Another downside for Gadrivi is because of the river that runs out on the beach. After a lot of rain, sometimes there can be sewage in the area. If you download the Surfers Against Sewage app, you'll be able to track this. Most of the time though, the water here is, is nice and clean, but yeah, just be aware of that as well. Moving back westward down the coast, you've got Senan. Now Senan and the adjoining Gwenver Beach are some of the most consistent and exposed beaches in Cornwall, which means there's basically always waves. Now, while one end of Senan and Gwenver cops a lot of swell, 
as the beach bends round into the corner, you've got a bit more shelter. So yeah, as you guessed, it's great for beginners. Senan town itself is pretty small. There's not really much going on, but if you're coming just to learn how to surf, place is pretty epic. So unless the conditions are gargantuan, you know, you're always gonna be able to surf at Senan. Go and see the guys down at Senan Surf Center for the best coaching in the area. Next, we've got Nuki. Now, Nuki is arguably the capital of surfing in Cornwall. This is where the world famous Fistral Beach is, which actually used to hold the championship tour. And to be honest, Nuki has the most variety in its beaches. I think there's like eight or nine beaches in and around Nuki. Fistral Beach is the most famous, and here you've got any number of surf schools and hire shops to grab equipment or take a lesson. Fistral is the most exposed beach. It almost always has waves. Elsewhere, you've got the beautiful Watergate Bay, which is where they hold the Boardmasters Festival, which runs every August. Or if the swell's huge, you can check out Town Beach or Lusty Glaze Beach closer to the harbour in town. Or if the swell's really, really big and you don't fancy surfing and it's a no-go for a beginner, you can check out the famous Cribber. Now, Cribber is a big wave spot that breaks off the headland off the edge of Fistral. On really, really big swells, you can see it break. Pretty cool spectacle and some of the biggest waves you can see in England. So Porth Town, just to the north of Gudrivi, is another exposed beach break in Cornwall. It faces due west, which means it picks up quite a lot of swell. The waves here get really, really good, particularly for advanced surfers in one of the corners. However, at mid-tide and on smaller days, this beach is also epic for beginners. And although the town itself is pretty tiny, the beach is beautiful. The one surf shop in town can take you surfing and provide all the equipment that you need. But yeah, they're some of the main beaches in Cornwall. Elsewhere, you've got a number of other beaches. On the south coast, you've got Pra Sands, you've got Perrinporth, you've got Bude up north. You've got so many places to learn how to surf. So I've only mentioned a few of them. Okay, so hazards and safety for surfing in Cornwall. Now in Cornwall, we have a service called the RNLI, which is the Royal National Lifeguard Institute. You'll find lifeguards at all the main beaches during the summer. Now the lifeguards run from April until October, and they are usually on the beach from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. They divide the beaches up to make it safer for everyone. They have a black and white flagged area for surfers, and then they have a red and yellow flagged area, which is for swimmers and bodyboarders. They'll also use a red flag to indicate areas of the beach that are dangerous, or they'll use multiple red flags to close off the beach when it's the whole beach is too dangerous. So if the swell is really, really big, they'll put a red flag in the middle of the beach and that means the entire beach is closed. You'll find that the lifeguards work in conjunction with all of the main surf schools around Cornwall. So you're never gonna go for a lesson when the conditions are too dangerous because the surf school will or should cancel it. But yeah, always be wary of the conditions. Something else you wanna do in Cornwall is be able to identify rip currents. Now, rip currents, okay, they're not, they don't have to be as scary as they sound, but it's basically water moving out to sea. At all the beaches in Cornwall and beaches around the world, you're gonna find rip currents. As the waves push into the beach, all of that water that moves in has to escape back out to sea. So what happens is the waves come in, waves tend to break on shallower patches of sand, and then between those shallow patches, you've got deeper areas where the water can escape back out. Now this is where rip currents are formed. You'll often find these in the corners of beaches, in and around rocks, but if you rock up at a beach and you're not sure about where the rips are, obviously ask your surf instructors or the lifeguards, but a good way to identify it is sometimes the rip currents will churn up the water so it'll be really sandy. It will almost look like a stream or river flowing back out to sea and it might carry some sand with it. So if you see a big stream of water that's all choppy and sandy moving back out to sea with no waves breaking in that area, you know that's a dangerous area. It's just something to bear in mind, especially if you're gonna surf as a beginner on your own. Also in Cornwall, the beaches get super, super busy, especially during the summer, which means there's heaps of people learning. There's a lot of people surfing on their own and there's lots of people swimming and bodyboarding. The lifeguards so obviously do a good job at trying to keep everyone separate and safe, but you've still gotta be aware of what's around you whilst you're surfing. So that's super important whenever you're surfing, wherever you're surfing in Cornwall. So I just want to interrupt this video to let you know of a wicked online course my friends over at House of Surf have developed. The Surfing Made Simple course was designed to recap everything you learn in your first ever surf lessons. It can be pretty tricky to keep the momentum going 
after your first surf lessons, especially if you don't live near the ocean. But the Surfing Made Simple course helps you to keep things moving and it helps you to not feel so rusty the next time you go back in the water. You can check out the course via the link in the description, but for now, let's get back on with the video. So around Cornwall, there's a number of surf orientated accommodation options. You've got surf hostels in all of the main surf towns. If you're a solo traveler or if you're on a budget and you want to come to Cornwall and learn how to surf, I'd recommend checking out Hostel World, both in Newquay and St. Ives, all the main surf towns, you're gonna to find affordable dorm rooms. Or if you're coming down with friends and family, I'd recommend using booking.com. Booking.com makes it super easy to, I guess, set the amenities that you want and find like a villa or a shared rental place. Again, you're gonna find these at all of the main surf towns and beaches. If you prefer to wrap all of your surf coaching, your lessons, your accommodation and transfers into one easy booking, check out booksurfcamps.com. They have a range of camps on their site throughout Cornwall for both beginners and intermediate surfers. I'll leave the link in the description where you can check those guys out. So the final point I wanna mention is that in Cornwall, there's so many other cool things to see and do. For example, you can head down and check out Land's End, which is the most southwesterly point in mainland England. Also just hanging out at the beach if the weather's good. Cornwall's got some of the most beautiful beaches in the UK, if not Europe, on the right day. So just hanging out on the beach. It is busy, but there's lots of people around. It's very lively, really cool place to, to surf and hang out.